Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 2024 Nova Scotia Scotties Provincial Playdowns and the 2024 Ocean Contractors Tankard Provincial at the Halifax Curling Club. At this, the end of this weekend, we will declare the Nova Scotia representatives for the 2024 Montana's Briar and the Scotties Tournament of Heart. Today's feature matchup is a match between Team Daigle and Team Mitchell, with the winner qualifying for the 3 4 game in the play in the uh, page playoffs. My name is Greg Doyle, and I'm joined this morning by Glenn McLeod. Good morning, Glenn. Morning, Greg. Game is on, game and is it's on. a do or die game. That's uh, right. I love it. We have our coffee full, and we are ready to go. Looks like Team Mitchell has the hammer first end from drawing closest to the button. First rock comes right to the button. Almost won the car. It looks like they're going to bank a little time or see also when you get a good first rock in the forefoot, uh, the opposition will hit it. Maybe it'll roll out of the forefoot and they might cut up a corner guard. Be more aggressive later. But we might have a wide open end here. Oh, a nice nose hit to start the game. And this is the lead for Team Daigle, Katie Vandenboer. I'm looking to throw a hit. Be a uh, interesting day for Team Daigle. They had a good start and then uh, lost two yesterday, so they got to uh, make a couple of adjustments, mostly yeah. in mindset. I All would right, say. So this and is tec uh, technically their third qualifier game. Yeah. Same. Touch more. Clean. Oh. Yep. Yep. This is the team Mitchell lead, Kate Fitzgerald. Nice. Yeah, right on the nose. Lindsay Burr just makes the hit. So we're just having a little technical difficulty with our microphones. We'll take care of it in a minute.
Actually, we are going to get a little action here, Greg. A little draw around the corner guard by Team Mitchell. And again, our apologies for the uh, the audio. We're working on it as we speak. That was Kate Callahan throwing that rock. Scrolled a little too much. Not sure if that yellow one's it touching or not. By our overhead view, it doesn't look like it is. Oh, Jessica Daigle's not taking any chances. Going to get rid of this corner guard. This is Team Daigle third, Marley Powers. And then she makes the peel. All right, again, apologize for the uh, the audio issues. I think we're back online, ready to go. Because if she makes it and stuffs it, she's sitting right on nose, and we're not going to have any of it. I think we're probably pretty Yeah. It looks like that was a nifty little shot at the back of the 8-foot, uh, 12-foot. It looks like that blue one is biting the rings in the back. That's a great shot. And this now skip Jessica Day getting ready to throw. Looks like she's throwing a a run back. <laughs> Not quite there. So Team Mitchell with the hammer is going to look to split the rings and lie two. I, think, I agree. Nice little uh, start to the game if they can get pick up a two. Yeah, talk about patience. That uh, one obscure corner guard and all of a sudden the two's in play. Absolutely. Okay. Just be careful once he gets off the center going this way. It might, yeah, it might budge a little. It's like a four. Here, McKenzie confirm it's a four, so that's a four second split that they're calling. Nice right. and fast. Yeah, nice and quick for the first end of a morning draw. Sweepers guiding this in, saying it's running a little bit. But they don't seem to be too concerned about it. Looks pretty good. And that's what you call splitting the rings. That is an absolute split of the rings. Now, where is Kevin Martin when you need him to throw that four-second peel across the rings? Yep. Nice. 
So all this morning's games are all qualifiers for the three, four games. So on sheet number one today, we have Team Hilliard playing Team McDermott. Uh, the winner advances to the three, four game and will play the winner of this game between Team Mitchell and Team Daig. And on sheet number two, we have the men playing in the uh, the C qualifiers with yeah. Team Colton Steele playing S Team Stuart Thompson. The winner will play the winner of Team Fleming and Team McDougal playing on sheet number four. And a good hit by Jessica there. Just stay close. This path is like, that's the first rock thrown down that path. So it might be Nose hit for the deuce, but yeah. way out in the wings, so it's not the easiest shot. No, absolutely not. Right probably didn't throw this in practice. Probably threw it a few times throughout the weekend, though. Yeah. The tendency here would be to throw a little extra weight going to the wings, but uh, yeah. sometimes not. you don't really need to do that. You can just throw a nice 10 control weight, and you should be all right. Yeah, especially on this well-prepared ice that Adam's got going. Right. On Tuesday night, you'd be ramping it up a little bit way out here. <laughs> For sure. Okay. I think you predicted it. Maybe a little hot. Yeah. They called it a little heavy out of her hand. However, it will be a, a one for Team Mitchell to open up this game. It almost really wasn't. <laughs> Just hit. Not ideal as far as not getting a two, but having the lead is never a bad thing. Never. Greg, so Absolutely get not. Get out of the gates feeling uh, fairly positive there. Absolutely and uh, not. Team Dag won't feel too bad that they dodged one. Exactly. So for anybody who's just joining us for the first time, um, this year both our Tankard and Scotties are being played at the same time. Uh, both of the tournaments had eight teams in them, and we ran a modified triple knock uh, excuse me a triple knockout format with four teams qualifying for the page playoffs uh, which is what we're doing this morning determining those last two qualifiers so in the women's side we had team christina black and team heather smith already qualify for the one two game which is going to be tonight at seven o'clock and we also have Team uh, Matthew Manuel against Team Owen Purcell in the men's tankard 1-2 game. Right, here we go with the second end. Kate Callahan has to put up the center guard. Wait only. Top 12. Yep. Line's good. Top 12. Hard, Sarah. Top right here. As far as it'll go. Okay. Yeah, they're coming in with first rock. Now will Jessica try to mix it up? And the answer looks like no. Not yet. No, a little early. I suspect uh, they got a game plan for the first few ends, and they're going to play that out a little bit. For sure. And then real life will interject, and we'll see what happens. Yep. Sometimes the tendency is when you're in a qualifying game, especially when you are at uh, on your last legs, you'll play it a little bit more cautious and open, and then maybe go a little bit later in the game. Just looking at some of the men's games over there. There are some rocks and play in the first end. If you turn over to our other feed Little with Paul. Selena and Hugh, you'll notice that Stuart Thompson's lying oh, quite a few yellows girl. over there to start. Hard Kate. Good. And the hit's made. Roll out. Now we'll see a corner guard, I believe. Here's the indication. And Katie will be asked to throw that corner guard up. Katie, of course, is the import from New Brunswick this year. Very nice. That 
It's interesting how people uh, <coughs> will strategize. We'll pick in, uh, one player up from out of province. That's right. Uh, who else? We, Peter Burgess is with uh, Paul Fleming, so that would be another one because he recently moved. And uh, I don't know if we have any others or not. Yeah. I have to think myself. Looking around, I see a lot of people that are from other provinces, but they do reside here. Yeah. Oh, we gotta go. Lines good. Head down. That used to be uh, an offensive ready? thing to go outside a province. Absolutely they did. You find someone good enough here. Yeah, there's. Now it's totally accepted. Yeah, there's enough talent in this province that they can easily make a run at Switching any national event. Yeah. So Team Diggs looks like they're going to ignore the rock that is just placed in the top eight, and they're going to use that corner guard that they just put there, asking Lindsay Burgess to go around. When the line looks perfect, Greg. They'll curve it in at the last second, maybe. Yep. Nice shot. Yeah, I think she's almost fully buried by the looks of it. Get a better look now. She's half around. Taking the weight down a little bit on this one, maybe to a 10. She hits the guard. She should be able to roll her guard into the rings and possibly lie two. But see if she can make the initial call here. See if we can learn or I can learn what a 10 is. So what's the 10? Do you think that's board weight? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 10 is probably more of a control weight, I believe. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it looks like control. Yeah. Jessica could be really aggressive and go right around that corner again as it's still there, but uh, they look content just to hit this one and lie two. Ten and a half. Ten and a half would be like a down control to a bumper weight. One thing I have noticed this week is this ice, this wonderful ice put up by Adam is uh, very weight sensitive when you come to a hit. You, you, uh, if you overthrow it at all, it will not move, but if you throw that right weight, it will cut very nicely in. That's the way you want it. That's exactly. You, need, uh, you want to have that precision in the mix. Yep. So a good chance here to make a hit and roll over by Kate Callahan. She looks like she can roll right over on top of the other one. Clean. Roll's not there and it is still second shot. But Team Daig will be happy just to hit that right back, make the roll a little bit steeper. He'll do this for a couple of shots, and either that rock will end up potentially uh, not being in the house anymore if they do nose hits, or it'll get to be a little flatter roll opportunity right. for Team Mitchell. Yeah. And as we're watching this rock come in, we'll just to take a little look around on the other scores. So in the first stand on sheet number one, it looks like there was a blank. Uh, so we're still at 0-0. Zero, zero. On sheet number two, uh, the men's tankard, Team Steele scored one in the first end and are up one nothing on Team Thompson. And over on sheet number four, it looks like Paul Fleming scored one in the first end. And he's up one nothing on, on uh, Brent McDougall. 
15 out of 16 rocks in play in those two uh, <laughs> men's games. Wow. One point. Wow. No. Close. That's when those yeah, time yeah. clocks are going to come into effect. Hard, hard, Sarah. Looks like she's hard, playing the double Sarah. here. Very close. Good, try. Good throw. Shoot. So now the question is how aggressive do we want to be? Do we want to hit and roll behind our corner guard or do we want to hit and roll away? Have the short two? Or do we want to roll and put three into play? She signaled to the corner guard, which is uh, the aggressive call. Is it something I said? So this is a tough one. Chances are she'd like to roll a little bit, and even, even if she does make the roll, I don't even think she'll get shot out of this. Well, the next three shots will be interesting. We get a nose hit here, then uh, Dag will have to figure out whether she wants to nose hit or draw to the wing. Right. And then. Mitchell will have to decide whether they're willing to concede a two or freeze and see if they can hold him to one. So, let's see how this plays out. The plot thickens. Yeah. Excited. This <laughs> Mackenzie Mitchell throwing. Close, Sarah. Stay close. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep, hard, Sarah. Looks like a nose hit coming. This is where I would be so tempted to go around that corner and put three into play, but uh, again, it's early. This is a good call. There's no need to complicate things here. No, you know, exactly. It's, it's really tough double. Right, it's very early. I think Mitchell's just way, so conceding their two, play probably across. hit. It looks like she's... What are you seeing? Either one is tough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go this way. If I hit a little thick, we'll roll in. It's tempting that rock's not really buried over there by no. the corner. Yeah. You can get shot rock and no. you get a hit and roll out. I think they're also worried that they won't be able to, to roll for shot on this rock. You'd have to throw your weight down and try to roll over as... Nice. Thinly as possible, so. Like solid nine. Okay. Uh, oh, she actually called a nine, nine on that, so she could be playing the double. So should be good. Again, the tendency on this one would be step the weight up and the rock be that much straighter, so. But again, this is what she wants to play, and nothing wrong with that. No, she sees it. Yep. Oh, looks like she's going for it. Yeah, she's, throwing, she's throwing a nine. Yep, hard, Sarah. Hard, Sarah. Hard! Hard, she turned hard, it in a little right bit. Up. Looks like she's just going to get the Sarah. nose of this. Oh, that is such familiar to make sure you get the one. And, uh, so it should be a wide open. Too much. Yep. Yeah, it should be a wide open hit, or excuse me, a draw for second point right now. That's where that, fir that point in the first end Feels good. So you give up a deuce, but you're only down one. That's Still right. Control. Right. This is Jessica Daigle throwing her last rock in the second end. I gave. 
we just look to see if the brushers ease up a bit. Get, there you go. Give you a little comfort that we didn't, uh, aren't looking to pound it the whole way. Again. And right to the forefoot for her second point. So Team Daigle will score two points here in the second end. And we'll take a 2-1 lead over Team Mitchell. So as we said, the, the winners of all these games will make it to the, the playoff round, being the 3-4 game of the Page playoff system. Uh, don't forget, for anybody who is listening or wanting to come down and watch some of the games today, that uh, don't forget that our next draw, our on-ice patch is going to be beginning, whereas uh, sheet one is going to be taken over and made into a, a patch and, and come down and purchase tickets for that. Today's draws are $10 per seat. Tomorrow's final, semi-final and final will be $15 a seat. Um, I do know that the 1-2 games for tonight are sold out. However, the, uh, the afternoon draw, there should be some seats remaining. So if you have any interest to come on down and be on the ice, bring your blankets, bring your gloves, and, uh, and enjoy the game. You'll have, have your own personal bartender out there on the ice. That's the selling point for me. It is a different experience. So you get out on the ice, you can really feel the emotion. Yeah. Uh, you can hear everything. Yeah. There's going to be only two games on, so you can take it all in. Right. It, it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, the atmosphere is going to be great down here. Yeah. And they say stuff on the ice that doesn't always come through. I've heard on that. The, uh, on the broadcast. I've heard that. Yeah. You're not one of those people, are you? Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. No, but, you're, uh, you're pure, Glenn. I like to watch the body language uh, too out there, yeah. uh, and sometimes it's not always on camera. It's good fun. <laughs> yeah, my team can get a little animated on Wednesday nights, you know. Yeah. Uh, interesting you think these wide open ends are not tense but they're very tense uh, it actually puts I find puts more pressure on each shot than when you get a junkie game where even if your shots don't work out perfectly you set yourself up for a saver down the road right. but a miss with a wide open end it's giving away points or uh, digging yourself in a hole right So this is Kate Fitzgerald. Looks like she's going to be throwing up a corner guard. Hoping to get some offense started. This one looks like it's coming deep. Burgess is going to throw a hit at this. Hopefully stay around. Lindsay, one of three Burgesses in the field. Kate Fitzgerald, one of two Fitzgeralds in the field. Yep. We've got uh, Coulters, a couple of Coulters in the field. No doubt Curlin's a family sport. It absolutely is. Yep. I have an eight-year-old who will be starting very soon, so... She chose the hockey path, but uh, Daddy will push her on the curling path soon. There you go. Well, uh, keep an eye on the contracts. There's a professional women's hockey league That's going. Right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much uh, the Grand Slam of curling is paying out these days, but you've got a retirement to think about, Greg. I do, and I have a coaching career to start as well. Yeah. This is Sarah Chater throwing the hit and hits the nose.
So uh, a little discovery that we made is uh, I think we the static that we were receiving earlier was from an on ice microphone off one of the players. So I believe that they've just been turned off temporarily until we uh, can fix them in the fifth end break. So if you're wondering why you're not hearing anything on the ice, that might be the reason. But like I said, we'll get on. We'll get on it. We'll fix it. It's half the fun of this is to hear the, the ch chatter on the ice. And again, we're wide open here in the third end. Everybody should be getting their feel for draw weight. These like free chances to uh, calibrate on weights and fundamentals and all that good stuff so yeah. that later in the game when the heat's on, all you can think about is uh, executing the shot. Don't have to worry about that other stuff. Yeah, and uh, all the teams have been throwing quite a mix of shots too. It's nothing, haven't been throwing all hits, all draws. So it's uh, it should do them well as the game goes along. He's working hard at this one. This one's moving. They got it. All these players are so fundamentally sound. It's incredible, really, from deliveries, releases, sweeping technique, communication. Absolutely, and that's that really goes to show you the uh, the amount of hours that they, these teams put in a practice, and the spieling that they do to get ready for an event like this. Yep. <laughs> coaching maybe matters a little bit. I don't know about the coaching. Well, <laughs> head shake for Mike Callahan. <laughs> Take the credit, Mike. <laughs> and just an exchange of stones. I have to say the women's game are leaders in coaching. They have uh, latched onto that earlier in general and it's paying off. They're more fundamentally sound than right. uh, a lot of the men's teams. My personal opinion, but I think it's true. And still, it's good to see some of these men's teams have some have some coaches as well. It's nice to see a, a Kim Kelly coaching yeah. out there, coaching yeah. a men's team. They're getting there. Yeah. It's a little late, but they're getting there. Yeah. Mark Dacey coaching uh, Purcell's team. Yeah. Uh, still a couple of men's teams with how to coach. Skips think they're player coaches. <laughs> right? uh, tough for them to uh, take on another voice sometimes. And that's why I've dropped down to third. I don't skip anymore. Which what do you like better? You, like I, you know what? I, I, I enjoy playing third. Yeah. It's it just takes that little bit of thought out of the game, but I can still get my input. Yeah. You get to talk about the front end when you're with the skip. You That's get to right. Talk about the skip when That's you're right. The front end. That's, That's awesome. right. I hear all the positives and negatives. I get to diffuse all of the the conflict. Yeah. Favorite phrase is uh, he didn't do that on purpose, so calm <laughs> down. <laughs> and again, we're just having an open end here. Jessica Daigle in the hack, but ready to throw a hit. Called a 10 5, I believe. I heard so that weight would be quite down. She's got the hit. But even before they joined up with Cameron, uh, Colton yeah. Lee, he was the junkers played together. Dartmouth boy. And again, a couple quick reminders. Just don't forget that our, the Health Acts Coiling Club is hosting Family Day today from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. There's going to be some face painting. The floor curling is going to be out today. There'll be snacks. Lots of different big board games, 
I know there's a giant Jenga upstairs, giant Connect Four game. So come on down with your family between 10 and 3. Have some fun. Did I see cornhole up there? Oh, you did? Nice. Do you know there's an American Cornhole Championship? I know. I've is seen it. On, it's yeah, it's yeah. intense. It is. It yeah. is intense, and they don't miss. I'm secretly really good at cornhole, but uh, I don't think I'll be uh, spieling anytime soon in that sport. And also don't forget that the club is hosting their 50-50 draw as well. Um, you can purchase your tickets online at halifaxcurl.com or you can purchase them upstairs here. Actually, no, you can't. You have to purchase them online. Why did I say that? The pot is up over $250 right now, so hopefully we'll get a little bit more in there. And you can purchase your tickets online. You don't even have to be here for the event as long as you're a resident of Nova Scotia. You are eligible for that prize, so go online, purchase your tickets. And Jessica Daigle makes the hit. And this will be a hit now for the blank. Another simple, but now a pressure pack shot. The That's whole right. everything changes if um, from a nose hit to a peel dramatically changes the game. Good. And she makes the rollout possibly. She did. Yeah, I believe so. It was kicked pretty quick there, so. Just waiting for a broom raise. <laughs> it was the kind of kick that uh, sometimes happens when it sticks around. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> but again, I think the, the blank was made, so Team Mitchell will keep the hammer going into the fourth end. Little body language check. Everyone looks pretty happy with the state of things so far. Yeah, so no panic or anything in yet. <laughs> Even end could be a time to get aggressive to the, when you have the hammer. Yeah, exactly. So we would like to thank our event sponsors for the 2024 Provincial Playdowns. Uh, we'd like to thank Kruger Products. So Scotty's is the sponsor of the Women's Provincial Playdown this year. And Scotty's has been a sponsor of women's amateur curling for more than 40 years at the provincial and national level. And we also want to thank Ocean Contractors Limited, which is our title sponsor for the Tankard Provincial. And Ocean Contractors Limited lo is located in Dartmouth and has been a valued sponsor of curling events and teams for the province. And please make sure that you visit their website at oceancontractors.ca. And off we go with the fourth end. All right. Stuff's about to happen. We get a guard. And a center line guard at that. <coughs> and cannot be ticked. Nope. On the center line. No tick rule in effect. So I'm curious, Glenn, this is your first broadcast on the uh, Scotty's Tankard. What is your thought on the tick rule? I like it. I love it. Yeah, things were getting, everybody was getting too good at the double peels and the ticks. Uh, I was watching a bit of a Grand Slam game last night. Someone wasn't on the center line in the eighth end, and Ben Hebert made a perfect tick. Might have been an extra end. And it just, there's nothing else to happen after that. Yeah, no yeah, it, it gets boring, yeah. It gets boring. Yeah. No, I, I, I really enjoy it. It's, uh, it really changes your strategy as well. It puts the rocks to the forefoot a little earlier, which creates more rocks in play, and I, I, I'm all for it. And it, uh, 
Like the lead position is cheap. You know, I started X number of years ago. Uh, it was like just throw guards and uh, sweep when told, but now the front end has to be so precise. The lead has to put it on center line, or it's a miss. Right. That's uh, you know called out. Is uh, we got to do better. Yep. And uh, that's fun for the leads. Fun for everybody. Be so involved. And I love the directional sweeping, like so much of it you got to pay attention to. Oh, yeah, it, and it really, I'm just going to take it off. Like this. It's her own rock. She's, she's allowed to move that. All right. Yep. We'll give you some updates over on uh, sheet four. Uh, Paul Clemens took one and two. Sorry, one in the first end, and he stole another one in the second. Two it looks like, looks like uh, T. Mitchell is looking at coming in the rings here, maybe to... Do a little Christmas tree or maybe a little split on their own rock they just have there. Oh, those splits, they look so attractive. Don't and they? And they get made about one every 23 times. I know, that's... that's they do look attractive. That's the great debate now. What is the hardest shot in curling? And yeah. it used to be the perfect freeze, and then it became the split. And a lot of people are saying it's just a straight guard now. I think a guard on curly ice is really tough. Yeah. And especially with directional sweeping, you can, you can overcut it, you can... Make lots of errors. So. so much about the depth. Yeah, exactly. So that draw attempt stayed high side. Not, uh, not ideal, but a little bit of a setup. Four out of four rocks in play. Yep. So Lindsay Burr just wants to be careful with this, that she does not come close to that guard, or she could even tap a blue in. She looks like she's close to that guard. And she's on it. Called it. And here comes the, the famous Colleen Christmas tree. I might give Brian Rayfuse a little credit. Oh for that yes, one I, too. I will. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. I actually saw Brian here yesterday. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. So this is interesting. That Christmas tree is still going to leave a double off the wide blue. Right. Um, Could even leave a triple where you yeah. where you leave it. This is the second Sarah Chater. This is where I miss the on-ice microphones to hear what the, the sweepers are calling out, but like I mentioned, we'll try our best to get that fixed in the fifth end. That's a very nice shot. Yeah, that's a good one. Now is a bail time. It looks like that way. Okay, Lindsay Burge is being asked to run this rock back. out and now we're wide open so the question is where do we go now do we spread our three rocks out do we play that lovely split shot again looks like she's gonna try to go around her corner guard spread the rocks out as much as possible yeah, I think this is the best option. You could go around the other one the other way. Yeah. Then all three rocks are on the same side of the sheet. So right. And they've seen this before. This was the way they were playing in the second end for a little bit. Right. Keep Callahan going for line right now. Coming awfully close to that guard. Looks like they're not going to get it by. They really like to get this on, and they did spin it on. So that is successful. Oh, pick your double or pick a hit and roll. Yeah, 
I don't mind this shot. Even if she doesn't hit this perfectly, she'll roll on top, or even she could roll it a little thinner and roll all the way over if yeah. need be. This is Team Daigle, third, Marley Powers. On a little bit of weight. Looks like she flipped that back a little bit. Standing right behind it. I don't even know if she has any of it. Oh. Yeah, it looked like Marley just turned that back a little bit out of her hand. And now, a big opportunity for Team Mitchell to lie a few. Split, but that risks one of your rocks not actually getting in the rings to set four. Right. If you make it, it's great. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I might even be tempted to, to split the one top eight. Yeah, I agree. Just to I agree. send them to the sides. Yep. Open up the four foot. Spread them out. Kate Callahan's being asked to tap the rock back or split the one at one o'clock. This has got a long way to curl right now. I think she so might that's a good thing. As long as yeah, she's I think, not through I, the I think she is through the rings. Uh -oh. but. too bad. I'm falling behind on my updates, so uh, I apologize. So let's take a look at sheet number one. It looks like we have a tie game 1-1. One, one. Looks like Team McDermott scored one in the second, Team Hilliard scored one in the third, and Team McDermott has the uh, the hammer into sheet, uh, excuse me, into end number four. And on sheet number two, it looks like Colt Steele is up two, no, excuse me, it's a 2-2 two -two game after three. Um, Thompson scored two in the third end, and it looks like Team Steele now has the hammer. And in our game, Marley Powers hits the nose, of Shot Rock. And on sheet number four, looks like Paul Fleming stole one in the second end, and it's up. And look, excuse me, and a blank in the third end, so Paul is up two nothing after four. After three, excuse me. You know, Kate Callahan will be looking to roll somewhere on this one. It's a little roll to the right side. Also rolled a heavy hit. You can get a double, but you won't be in the ring. That's right. Make the double, you'll have something to draw around in your next shot. But I, I don't think she really has an option. I think she has to play this shot. Skip Jessica Dig. Looking at make the double. And she's making the double, but she's making the roll over. No cat and mouse. Not quite getting what they called for in a couple of shots here, but in the ball game. Yep. I think ideal, ideally you'd want to just nose hit this, I believe. Yeah. Uh, make sure there's only awkward doubles left after uh, the shot. Exactly. I don't think you want to roll too much to the center or you could uh, leave a hit and roll back behind something. And this is Mackenzie Mitchell coming out of the pack.
It looks good. It's actually making quite a move. Yes. Actually, really taking a dive. Wow. That pick? I, it might have. I was I was sitting right behind that. It was she looked like looked like she threw it really well and it moved quickly. Yeah. It's a big break for, for Jessica Dang. be looking to make a little hit and flop behind that corner guard. So if you're Team Mitchell, you pretend that Dag made the double and then you made your shot so that you're in the positive That's right. of mind for your last one. Absolutely. Just a little mind manipulation to make sure you're in good shape for your last shot. That's right. Katie's on this right away. She's just got the nose or a little roll. Kenzie will have to deal with it because it is shot rock. of course is a, uh, a native of Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, has represented Newfoundland at 13 provincial championships and she's only 22 years old. What does that mean for age then? Curling since nine? <laughs> in provincial or since nine? <laughs> that, would be the teacher. that would be impressive if that was the case. I'm guessing that she probably was in a Couple, couple of in a year, yeah, ah, under 18, yeah, under 21. Yeah. Yeah, they were all Scotty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice shot there from Mackenzie. She'll score two, and she will go up three to two after four ends here at the Halifax Curling Club, 948 South Bland Street. <laughs> Looking for something to do today? Come on down, watch some great curling action. Like we mentioned, it's family day. Uh, we have a live band, actually two live bands playing tonight. So I think, uh, let's take a look. Uh, Brooklyn Blackmore is opening at 5.30 tonight. And the Greg Mitchell Trio is coming on at 8.30. So should be a fun night of events here at the Curling Club. Kitchen is open, as always. Wonderful food. Did you manage to experience Don't Air Day yesterday, Glenn? <laughs> Through others. So <laughs> I saw them, uh, and they looked good. And it wasn't after 11 p.m., so I didn't <laughs> participate. Understood. Yeah. Understood. I had one yesterday. They were really good. Yeah. I hear it's not just nighttime food anymore. No, uh, that's right. 24-7. <laughs> I think Pizza Corner is open 24-7 for the most part. You can get a donor any time of the day. And here we go with the beginning of the fifth end. Kate Callahan, or Kate Callahan, excuse me, Kate Fitzgerald. So many Kates everywhere. Let's see if they're going to Put one out front or are coming in. Looks like they're coming in for this first shot. It's really interesting. I think everybody's kind of happy but not thrilled about the way the game is going. Yep. I mean, each team has had a chance yep. and there's uh, been, there's dodged been, a bullet. Right, there's been some opportunities and yeah. uh, shots made, shots missed. But hey, that's curling. Yeah, this is when uh, the tummy starts to flutter just that's a right. little bit. Yep. And then he takes stock in the fifth. For some teams, this is what you play your entire season four is this one tournament. Yeah, you could tell because it was impossible to get practice ice before <laughs> this event. Everybody yeah. was uh, yeah. working hard. Yeah. And 
and that's a testament to the staff here at the Halifax Curling Club. Oh, yeah. Adam, Mandy, and Kelly are amazing at their jobs. Yeah, absolutely. They made it work for everybody. It was, uh, there was a lot going on. do with this it's not going to cover it so you save it as a guard or you try just try and get it to that center line and yeah. I think they did so All right, that's good yeah I like this call not trying to hit it out but yeah. just uh, nestle and that's the difference with the new tick rule I find too is with the center line that rock just thrown there um, it really defaults to the, the draw now, whereas before, you probably would have played a hack weight shot to try to get that rock um, moving in the forefoot area, but... Uh, yeah, and if you take the guard, that's fine too in the old way, but with the new rule, yeah. you can't do it. And look at the uh, the um, carving. Did you see that? Oh, I saw Lindsay it. Bridges? I, pretty neat. I saw her do that a, a few draws ago. It's something I might have to try. Yeah. I agree. It's uh, it's becoming more prevalent. I have another Grand Slam watching, and I, I don't know if it was Grand Slam, but Brent Gallant was doing it. So oh, I yes. trust they're uh, you know yep. working hard 12 hours a day to figure out what works and doesn't. So <laughs> if they're doing it, I figure there's a little bit of science or legitimacy behind it. Right. Sarah Chater Looks trying good. to make a roll. And the roll's made. A little far, but uh, still does the trick. And Jessica could probably now make a hit and roll behind that corner guard that they placed there. Stay towards center. I think her original call was to roll behind the guard, but uh, behind the corner guard. Behind the corner, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but either one will do the trick. It looks like now she's going towards the center. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Still does the trick. Good shot. Yeah, she's got to deal with it. It's edge on edge right now. Looks like she's just playing like a hackish weight with that type of ice. This is a big shot. This yeah. uh, done well, <laughs> then uh, it'll be total control. Right, if this rock hangs though, he yeah. can easily jam that yellow in the back and then exactly. Team Daigle can go behind a corner guard or a center guard. Big shot, most important shot of the game so far. Sweepers are on and off, and I'd like to say Kate's sweep, sweeping, but they're both Kate's. So yeah, you're right. Oh, there's the jam. There's the jam. Yep. Now, now if Dag can hit and roll behind, right. then he's got uh, great control of the end as well. Yep. Burgess coming out. Looks like she's playing a little bit of weight with that ice. You can afford to roll a little too far on this as long as you're still lying two after this shot. You just want to make sure that you're not hanging and jamming again on the back, which this one is looks like it's jam or hanging. And yeah, this jam after jam is a little deflating. Yeah. And again, I think that's just all weight choice. I think yeah. that, that one they, they called a little bit more weight, and I think the weight needed to be down a little bit more to make that shot. Yeah, I think backline, you don't even need to knock it out. No, absolutely not. Get it across. 
Everything's about getting across the face of those shots. It doesn't matter really what the weight is, just get across the face. Right. So they're just discussing the weight on this shot right now. So what does that do for us? Team, Steel Team Mitchell doesn't even have to make the hit here. They're actually lying one at the back. They could could draw it behind if they wanted, but this is a this is a good call as well. Distracted there, but uh, your team made a nice shot and rolled behind half behind cover. So now Team Dag will have to <coughs> make the run back, try to clean this up a little bit. Still be tempting to hit and I think I could play board weight and touch that back blue one. Right. And roll behind the corner. Yeah. There's options here. Set up some backing. There you go. Marley Power is about ready to throw. Again, they're taking uh, not very much ice on this, so they're playing a little bit of weight. Looks like they're playing, trying to make the uh, the double, I think, in the roll. Katie's trying to carve this over. And they're going to roll out. That's actually a big miss. Yeah, really. Now Team Mitchell can get around that center guard and really take control of this end. Yeah, you had to make something positive out of that. It didn't need to be perfect, but yep. you either need to stick around or tick the guard even to keep right. it open. Right. This is second Kate Callahan. Ideally, we'd like to be top four around this center guard. And as we're uh, Watching this shot, we'll just give you an update on sheet number one. Uh, Tanya Hilliard stole the fourth end and is now up 2-1 on Team McDermott. On sheet number two, looks like Colton Steele took one in the fourth end and are up 3-2. And in on sheet number four, looks like Team McDougall and Team Fleming just finished the fourth end and they don't have a score yet. This is uh, always fun to watch former teammates playing each other. So Kelly Bachman, I know, played a lot with Christy McDermott on right. sheet one. That's right. Colton Steele played with Stuart Thompson on sheet two. And I don't know what to say about Fleming's got a half his senior team on his side and <laughs> yeah. members of his and senior team. There's another one him. on the other side. Yep. Shout out to that senior team for recently winning the uh, the national seniors. Yeah, that yeah, was really impressive. Yeah. Did you watch much of it online? I, I honestly didn't, yeah. um, but uh, I I definitely kept up with the scores and was watching the scores as they went along. Oh, they played awesome. Yeah. yeah. They'll they'll represent Canada wonderfully. Yeah. I believe that's in Sweden in a couple months. It is, and the coach of Team Day, Kevin Newlett, is going to go over with them. Great. And uh, help them out. Kevin Wonderful. Kevin's done a lot of work with Paul on his Briar trips. So take advantage of all that Absolutely. experience and familiarity. Plus, he lived in Europe for a little while, so he can help them adapt to the culture. That's right. They're kind of, I won't say they're uncultured, but they could use the help. <laughs> Do that Euro conversion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's already some commentary about people being scared of trains and not understanding what the Euro rail is all about. So we'll help them out. All right, this is Mackenzie Mitchell. Slotting out looks like she's going to put a guard on Shot Rock right now. And like we mentioned, this is the hardest shot right now in curling, in my opinion. Let's make that perfect guard. And this one looks way out there. I think the team thinks it's pretty tight as is. And they're going to bring this in. A little bit of a miss, but uh, still does the job. It's still uh, still going to force Team Daigle here to do something. 
try to take their one. Question is, did she line up a triple here? It's close. Yeah. They can hit it fairly thick on that middle one, so I don't know if the top one would roll out or not, but uh, I think they could probably throw the rock pretty hard. So make two out of three go away. I right. That's success. Yep. Yep. This one should see some weight on it. She's taken the, the broom right in the middle of the rock. So this will probably be as close to appeal weight as they can get. extra rotation on this rock. Sweeping it right away to hold that line. And she'll get two out. Pretty good shot. A couple options now for Team yeah. Mitchell. They could draw around that. They could hit and force for one. Yeah, this is interesting because you draw around it, looks good, then you could potentially set up a nose hit double to give up two, right. which doesn't feel good. Right, if you make the draw too good. Yeah, and you could hit the top one, be pretty defensive, but that could bring a jam into play. Yeah, we've seen, we've seen a few jams this game, so I don't yeah. know if... I think ideally half buried around that yellow on the side there. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think the most important thing with this shot is just to, to, to try and out count that yellow one. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as, it is as it's she's lying two at the end of this shot. A little extra time to hack. And this is the last rock for Team Mitchell this end. Looking to put some pressure on. Sarah Chater sweeping hard, I'm guessing for line. Weight doesn't look too bad. Again, this is important to get a second shot out of this. And she did. So the, yeah, so the question now, do we try the double or do we just try to draw to take our one? Yeah. Yeah, looks like she's gonna try to make the double. It's definitely there. This is all in my opinion, about weight control. You don't want to overthrow this. Make the double and roll out. Just off nose. Yeah. Pretty similar line to what she just threw. So I'm feeling good about that. And a big shot up coming here for Jessica Digg. Trying to make the double to score two points. Here we go. Uh, saying the weight is up a little bit. Sweeping for line. I don't think so. Looks like it's going to be a steal of one for Team Mitchell. And going into the fifth end break, it looks the score it will be Team Mackenzie Mitchell four and Team Jessica Daigle two. They'll get the hammer back going in six, but we're going to take a little break and we'll get back with you in five minutes.
And welcome back to the sixth end of play for the 2024 Nova Scotia Scotties Provincial Playdowns and the 2024 Ocean Contractors Tankard. We're back to our game, our C qualifier game against team with Team Mitchell against Team Daigle. Team Mitchell has a two-point lead. First rock from Team Mitchell came right to the back of the 12 foot. And uh, Team Daigle putting up a corner guard now. Yep, Team Daigle will be going on the offense for sure. Just doing a little sideline reporting with Coach Hulet. That's what he was saying. And, uh, Did you go get one of those oat cakes? They were delicious, by the way. Uh, I did not. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully there's extras later. Yeah. <laughs> Just to give a quick update, too, on our um, our on-ice microphones, um, we, we are having an issue with one or multiple on-ice microphones for this draw, so uh, we are not going to be able to listen to the uh, players online or on the ice and we'll try our best to get that fixed for the next game. Will we read lips? In, We're, I'm, uh, I'm a teacher, I'm very good at that. Yeah, so. okay. And we can still hear some of the banter back and forth here at the club because we're so close to the action, but uh, we'll try our best to, to do that Ripley uh, <laughs> lip reading for you. Team Daigle coming around the corner guard. Well by the guard, and it's coming over quite nicely. And it looks like it's fully buried behind that guard. Pretty good shot. Great shot. Game on. Yeah. Mackenzie's going to put up a guard again. So game is on. Is the second Sarah Chater looking to put a tight guard on Shot Rock? This one's got a long ways to curl. Callahan trying her best to bring it over. Looks like she's carving it. Yeah, she's doing a good job on that. Yeah. Nice shot. Nice shot. You left a little piece open. You might want to. They might want to try to play a hack weight shot and roll over. But uh, looks like Jessica's just going to try to keep this as open as possible right now. That rock put around the corner guard is second shot, so that is uh, that's beneficial to Team Daigle. You know, a little hack waiter on that front one and I know that's, behind the corner. I know. Tempting, right? That's very tempting. Yeah. I think early on, you just want to get yellows in play in right. different spots. Right. And, uh, Benefit with this shot is if you have the nice little rollover, you'll have a second corner guard over there. Yeah. This one's going to roll a little too far. So Mackenzie <laughs> making a decision here whether or not to, to keep on the offense and put the guard up. She could also try to make a play on that shot, uh, second shot rock behind the cover. Maybe play a little hack waiter shot on that. Oh, she's going to take the guard. <laughs> You know, part of me says to, to try just a hack waiter on this to carve it over to try and get it out, but uh, they seem happy to, to keep this open. Yeah, I agree with that part of you, but it uh, would be what I'd do and check the guard if you get this shot anyway. And the peel's made. Yeah. Tempted to 
put the corner guard back up. Now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> Lindsay Burgess saying that her She's weight waving is down. To the fans I don't know. You know. It's kind of a or maybe it was down weight. Yeah, it's making a move, but I think she's got a good little shot here. Beauty. Very nice. Spreads them out nicely. What's the goal of Team Daigle this end is to have at least a two-pointer set up, I would say. Try to keep the game back to even ends. Kate Callahan, she looks like she's a little outside on this one. I don't know if she's got any of this. She's not, and she's taking her own at the back. So again, Team Daigle looks like they're going to spread the rocks out as much as they possibly can. They want to keep the forefoot open. Marley Powers looking to play a little tap back on her own. Look at the carving, that's awesome. <laughs> and that rock was heavy and she carved it into a uh, tick and saved it. <laughs> and it actually that's worked out really well. It did, yeah. That was uh, well done by Lindsay Burgess. Looks like Kate Callahan is going to throw some weight, try to make two of them disappear. Sometimes problematic when you have to hit a third rock, the rock that's lying third shot. She's going to get her some type of a roll. Very nice shot. Well done. Yeah, even though she's not shot rock, that still does the trick. Now you could tap a foot and stay frozen on the blue and be ultra aggressive. Yeah. But you could nose hit it like two. You could corner freeze to it. You could do a freeze tap, as Glenn said. Yeah. Big decision here. They've tended towards the hits and sit two, splitting the rings, which is not a bad way. But if you get an inkling for three, a little tap with staying frozen on the blue is right. uh, attractive. I think the important thing is here is not to panic. I don't think you really have to make that blue disappear right away. You can, you can just tap it, move it around. Yeah. You, you can make two points appear just out of that blue rock by itself. Absolutely so, can. Uh, use that and the other two yellows are just bonus points. Yep. Looks like she's playing a little bit of weight here. Maybe maybe just a bumper weight. Let's try and save her shooter. Move the blue back to the back 12 possibly. This, watch how technically sound Marilee Powers' uh, delivery is. It's really impressive. Yeah. It seems like every time I come down to the club, I see her throwing. Yeah. It's really good. This rock looks pretty good. I'm sitting right behind it. A little unlucky to lose that back... Uh, Yellow, but she rolls to a spot where it was. It was a good throw. I 
a little too much weight. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see the necessity to play that weight. I, I, I would have just played a hack weight, if anything, just to set them up a little bit better. And it gives Team Mitchell a little bit of an out here. So as we're waiting for McKenzie to throw, I'll just give you an update on sheet number one. Uh, team McDermott scored three points in the fifth end and now have a five, uh, excuse me, a 4-2 lead on Team Hilliard. I'll just wait till McKenzie throws a rock. Makes the hit on the top one. And just to continue with the updates on sheet number two, uh, Colton Steele stole one point against Team Thompson in the fifth end and now lead four to two. Team Thompson has the hammer in the sixth end. And on sheet number four, Brent McDougall looks like he scored one in the fifth end and is trailing three to one against Paul Fleming and Paul has the hammer back in six. So the goal here is to spread your rocks out as much as possible in a place where you're not leaving a double. Gonna be pretty deep not to leave a double, which uh, gets a little dicey. Yep. This is where you think I'm gonna throw top T line and let the sweepers take it. This is also where you want the sweepers to lean in so you can start getting a little more comfortable. There's that curve again. Yeah. So she's going for line or is she trying to slow it down? <laughs> it could be. There. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Perfect shot. So I haven't watched a few games. I'm going to say Lindsey Burgess is the only one actively carving on a regular basis that right. way. Like people are carving with a bunch of brush strokes, but yep. not uh, that uh, hard on the forward press. That's the only other one I did see. I saw Robbie McLean doing it a few times. Was but he? That, yeah. Okay. And Mackenzie Mitchell is settling down in the hack, getting ready to throw her last rock of the sixth end. Aiming for a nose hit. This one is inside and moving. She's got a piece of it, but she's not gonna stay around. That out turn looks like it's moving. That's a couple of shots down there. Yeah, with hit weight. yeah we thought it uh, a couple shots ago or, or a couple ends ago it actually picked, but maybe it's just that spot. So this is an open draw for Jessica. She's going to take the other turn. Sweepers are on and off, so they must like this rock. Just guiding it in. Looks pretty good. Oh, the early hand up. And again, right to the T line for her second point. So after six ends, we are down to a four end game. We're now tied at 4 4. Team Mitchell will get the hammer back going into the seventh end. Everybody's happy. I think uh, Dag had a three, but ended up getting a two, so mostly happy there. And uh, Mitchell was looking at three for a second there, but only gave up two, so yep. mostly happy there. And now the seventh end. 
Mitchell should be trying to maintain and hammer into the eight, so see if they can sneak a blank in, but Dag may not want that to happen. Yeah, so. I think you will see some rocks in play. The, both teams are have no issue on time right now. There's lots of time remaining. Yeah. Both have their timeouts, so I'd like to see, and I think they will start to put those rocks in. I think we'll see a cluttered forefoot this end. I think Glenn just want to send a shout out to our youth junior team that is currently in Korea, representing Team Canada. Uh, two of the members are from Nova Scotia. Nathan Gray is skipping, and Owen Fisher is playing second. They, uh, they arrived a few days ago in Korea with their coach, Helen Radford, and uh, they played their first game. I saw the score up this morning. Unfortunately, they lost to Italy this morning, but uh, look to rebound tomorrow against Brazil. Italy? When, when did Italy get so good at Oh, my. They're uh, taking over. They are a sneaky good team, man. Yeah. That The Italian men's team is just amazing. Yeah. And we're lucky enough to have them here most years for our, uh, our Stu Cells Halifax Classic that we host in November. Fortunately, they weren't able to play this year, but they still came down to see their uh, female counterparts, and they um, they tell us they come every year for the seafood chowder. So they came, they got their chowder, and yeah, watched a few games. Yeah. What well, I, I was here when Helen and uh, that uh, youth Olympic team was practicing, and they looked really good. So yeah. I have no doubts that they're going to bounce back. Yeah. And, uh, make some noise there. I was actually reading a story this morning from that event. This is the, uh, the first ever curling event that a team from Africa is in. Oh, cool. So the uh, team from Nigeria has a junior team. Now, unfortunately, they, I believe they gave up an eight-ender, their first end, and lost 22 to nothing. But, hey. Gotta start somewhere. Good, yeah, good on them. I don't, I don't like to do this, but there is a team playing right now in the provincial championship who gave up an eight-ender earlier this year. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> we're not going to say who they were, but if if you're no shame. No, exactly. If you're if you're a curling fan, you might know who that is, but we won't. Uh, we won't divulge that. It takes guts. It does. To put yourself in that position. It so does. I, I am, I'm impressed that people will take that on. No, I can safely say I have not scored my eight ender yet, nor have I had my hold in one, but uh, I've had a seven ender against me, but <laughs> that was a steal of seven. Any eight enders in your career? No? No, none. Uh, as much as I admire people who put it on the line, I make sure there's one of the opposition rocks on the back. <laughs> yes, <possibly>. yes. <laughs> I actually remember a few years ago, I was playing in the, uh, the, the Claire Summerspiel, and I was playing Paul Fleming, and it was a, uh, just a fun game. Everyone was just having fun, and I had a very recreational team, and uh, I was facing seven against... Paul on my last shot, and I had to make a draw to the button to only give up. Actually, I think I still gave up two points, even though I came to the button area. But uh, anyway. So you gained five. Pretty play. much, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So it looks like the game is on here. We are. Looking at freezing to the shot rock. Coming up a little short. And looks like the devil's still there, edge on edge. Now again, this this is what we've talked about with this game. This this should be a weight control shot. We do not have to overthrow this. A good uh, control weight should do the trick here. And you can manipulate the rock if you need to. Second Sarah Chater. Okay, Callahan is on this right away. She 
She is close. Very nice, nice shot. shot. That was good sweeping. I was kind of watched the edge of that center line to see how fast it's crossing, and it looked tight to it. And then with uh, Kate sweeping, it bought a little air time. Right. So Team Daigle will look, probably look at making the double right back. Second, Lindsay Burgess. Marley Powers on this, trying to keep this straight. Oh, very close. Now a really good opportunity to roll deep, roll buried here. Fly two behind cover. Yeah, this will be uh, a good shot here, and then Dag will have to be thinking about freezing the back one. <laughs> this looks close. Yeah, nose hit does the trick. with this shot. I don't know if uh, Powers will be able to roll for shot after this stone is released. So they're looking around. They're going to go for a little talk, I believe. I think they're not too worried about their time, so they won't call a timeout yet. I think the question is, is it time possibly to, to draw around force the issue? you're really confident in the double, you could do that and stick around, or you know, freeze, freezes, negate everything else that's going on out there. So if you feel good about draw weight, you can just freeze the back one. And, right. Uh, <coughs> shrink the scoring area, try to hold them to Mitchell to one. Yeah, I think they're worried about if they, if they roll behind cover, then they're just going to leave uh, the Mitchell team a draw around as well to lie yeah. to. So I, I think this, Call is probably going to make try to make the double and hold the shooter somewhere where they have to make a play at it. If she rolls out here, then the Mitchell team will have a great chance of burying two rocks or having two rocks buried. So we're about to see what's going to happen. Actually looks like they're playing the role, but now do you ignore that and do you draw around? That's the initial call. Dangerous rock. It is. <laughs> but if you hit that rock, you're probably not going to be in the rings. Didn't roll way over. Is pretty good, I think. Yeah. What do you think, Coach? Yeah. Coach Mike likes the draw next to us. Looks like they've had a discussion and they're going to talk about uh, making the hit and the roll over to lie second shot. <laughs> I don't think you'll see much weight at this. You'll Lots of ice. Yeah. Could be just a hack waiter. Yeah. You might even be able to roll behind cover with a hack weight shot. Just to bite the rings. Good shot. 
Yeah, we're just taking a quick peek over at sheet one. Looks like uh, Team Hilliard scored a big five against Team McDermott. And the jam was made on our sheet. It's a really good opportunity there. And now Marley Powers will try to draw around her center guard. Yeah, you know, when we're back here, we think it's chess, where you just put the rocks exactly where yeah. they're going to go. Yep. But then uh, there are different outcomes on the table. Absolutely. You see the armchair curler at home saying, oh, I can do that. I can put it wherever I want. And then they come to the club for the first time and give it a try. And they're like, whoa, this is not as easy as it looks. Yeah, I didn't know I had muscles in those parts. <laughs> Line looks pretty good on this shot. Coming in nicely. Yeah. Don't want to go too deep. Nice shot. Might have even come out the other side a Just sliver. A yeah. yeah. Looks like it did. Throw a freeze tap. You can probably get it with half weight and roll behind the right. blue too. Right. It's probably be the idea. Deal, if you want to take that on. Put the broom right on the inside edge of that blue rock and just throw whatever weight it takes to get through the hole. Right. Something good will happen. Now I like the shot with with that hack to back line weight. Like even if you hang out a little bit, there you're going to split both blues on, which is kind of a a good backup shot just if needed. Yeah. Press in the glasses, fix the broom head, get in the hack. And go. go. It's an Al Hackner move. <laughs> yes. It looks like the this one is hanging out. Be just a little too much weight thrown on that rock. Now a big chance for Jessica Daigle to sit right on top of her own rock, yeah. put the pressure on. That rock by Kate Callahan actually is not in an ideal spot for Team Mitchell. Won't be able to run back if uh, if this shot's made. Say, day, take a breath. Uh, you don't want to be heavy here. It was very uh, quick coming down uh, to throw this rock because it right. is such an opportunity. So yep. you just could get that uh, top 12 is fine, top 8 is fine. So a big draw in the seventh end for Jessica Digg. Go with the curve. <laughs> well, it looks pretty good if yeah. the weight is. <laughs> Ideally, be right on top of it. It's a great shot. Great shot. Now, I believe we double peel needs to be made. <laughs> just to give you another update, we just told you about the five that. Team Hilliard scored in the sixth end to be up 7-4 on Team McDermott. On sheet number two, Stuart Thompson scored one in the sixth end and is trailing uh, Team Colton Steele 4-3. And on sheet number four, Team Fleming scored a big three points in the sixth end and are now leading 6-1 to one over Brent McDougall. It's a big shot here. This isn't made. Could be a steal of two. Really want to try to get the double peel here. She 
close. Very nice, nice shot. shot. Very nice shot. And an important shot to make that uh, forefoot open. And the call will be the guard, but uh, you will come top 12, top 8 with this and really force it. Yeah. So they're calling that they want this on the center line, which would uh, make Mitchell's shot that much more difficult. She'll have to go around that, try to draw a piece of the side of the button. So right on the center line, we'll give a nose hit. To possibly, possibly a triple, but yeah. uh, definitely a double. I don't think they mind too much giving a team a triple to score one. No. This one is hanging out a little bit. It's coming over now. Don't want to be too deep on this. That's pretty good. That's a good job. Uh, there's two shots here. You can draw the side of the button, or you could just uh, hit the second rock and just try to stay there and concede one. Or you could try to blast it in there. And if you could throw the peel weight, you could even blank. Yeah. Definitely get one. <laughs> Holding them to one is really good too. So what you mentioned there about a, like a hack waiter and stay on top of that one on the top four foot might be the easiest shot out yep. of all these. Yep. <laughs> She's opted to play the uh, the triple. Yeah. Which I'm not against. I think that's it's what you feel comfortable with right now. This might be the easiest way to score one, instead of having to draw the side of the butt. All right, big shot coming up for Mackenzie Mitchell. Okay, Callahan's on this rock pretty hard. And she nice sure shot. moved two. And cut the damage down. It's a pretty good shot. That was a really good shot. Yeah. That was a, it was curling. Uh, they got that back one. That was that's not a look too great after uh, halfway down, but well done. Yeah. So after seven ends, we are now Team Daigle has scored five and Team Mitchell scored four. And today being the first day of our playoffs, and you're looking for something to do, come on down to the 948 South Bland Street, and come on down and watch some curling. Remember, today is our family day, starting at 10 o'clock, which, oh, it's 1048, so it has already started upstairs. I know some of our junior teams are up there running the program and putting that face paint on. Kitchen is open all day today. Don't forget there's Live acts happening tonight. 50-50 draw happening. Go on HalifaxScroll.com. And don't forget about our on-ice patch. That is beginning our next draw at 2 o'clock. Your opportunity to be on the ice with the athletes. Have your own personal bartender. It should be lots of fun. For tickets, go on to HalifaxScroll.com. So first rock goes up. Pretty high guard for the first one, but it is touching the center line, so it can't be touched, or can't be removed from the center line. And Kate Fitzgerald throwing her first rock. This rock 
Looks like it's coming in nicely. Don't want to be too deep with this one. Top eight max, I would think. Pretty nice. And Jessica Daigle asking her lead. Katie to put a rock on top of the blue one just thrown. What they're calling back eight, I believe. Reading lips again. You don't want to bounce off this. Looks like it's going to. And still left that blue one behind cover as well. Mm. So Team Mitchell has some options. They can hit and flop under, hit and roll away. They can ignore it, freeze to their own rock. Looks like they're going to do the hit and roll away. Gotta stick around. Yep, big time. Callahan on this. Don't want to stay there. Pretty good. Oh, that rolled back pretty pretty hard there. I'm always impressed when the uh, leads hit and roll to the spot that was called. They just don't get a chance to do that very often. No. It's not like back in the day with the when we had the three rock rule and the the lead second shot was always a appeal or a hit. Must be close. Very nice shot. I don't know if she could know if she rolled a inch or two heavy, but still, still a good shot. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, an appeal. Would have been a good time to come in and just freeze on top of that blue one. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. It's not a bad call. You just you're. Uh, That's how you want to manage these last three ends. Yep. I think you see Daigle throw a, a guard up on this. I don't think she'll make a play on the blue yet. She's going to freeze. Interesting. Not a bad call. Just. Uh, it's early. Yeah. So lots yeah. Of stuff can happen. Yeah. That's kind of why I was leaning more towards the guard right now, but. Uh. That's why I'm not playing in this event. I don't know that you'll ever qualify for the Scotties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I meant. Oh. It was funny <laughs> yesterday. The um, this one's coming a little deep. And not going to be shot. It's funny, yesterday we, the uh, Halifax Curling Club actually had the Women's World the, um, World Championship trophy was here for the day as the uh, Worlds are taking place in Sydney this year. So it was here today. I believe they said uh, they're taking it to Amherst today. But um, I thought I better get my picture with this because this is a trophy I guarantee I will never win in my life. Yeah. It was impressive. That was a big piece of hardware. I, I, I didn't realize it was that big. Yeah. That freeze is kind of attractive here. It is. Uh, splitting the rings isn't too bad either. Nope. I kind of like the split of the rings. I like this yeah. call. Yeah. Well, the only problem with the freeze tap, it, if you make it perfect, it's ideal. But if you're not perfect, you hit it off off the center of the rock, you could set up a double quite easily. Yeah, and you can, that'll be there for a few shots. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so you want to make sure this one is a little bit deeper than your top rock. So ideally, top four to T line on this. Sweepers aren't touching this one. Say 
sails through the rings. In general, nerves equals heavy. So just something to watch for. Yeah, absolutely. Now the little bit of a problem for Team Dagle is that Blue Rock becomes a little trickier to get out if they try to make a play on it. There's that side blue one that, even though it's not in the rings, could be a catcher later. So they're trying the same shot again. They're trying to corner freeze onto the top of the blue. Looks like it's over curling a bit. Mm. So it looks like that blue is not going to go anywhere anymore. Ah, so <laughs> throw another blue behind, like around the button, and then that will allow that blue to get removed. Yeah. Wow, where do you put it now? I don't know here. This is... Your split, split and rings might be still okay and let someone else fool around with the middle and see what's right. left. Right, right. I wouldn't touch anything over in those... Oh, Looks right. like they're playing some weight. Okay. There are some options here. You could uh, you could corner freeze to that and even tap it a foot with a corner freeze. You know, the key here is just save the shooter. Right, so save the that shooter, is important. You're sitting blue, two blue, it might be one first shot and third shot. Yeah, absolutely. This one's close to what they're asking. Not bad. Pretty good. Not bad. But it does leave the, the chance of that blue to be removed now. So timeout's going to be called by Team Daigle. That was a good leave. Uh, it was definitely a daring call. Yeah. I was watching uh, Coach Mike Callahan next to me. <laughs> he wasn't a big fan of that shot, but. He should be happy with how it turned out. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is always interesting. We get two teams, coaches and teams talking, and they're about three feet apart. So <laughs> they could be listening. Right. What should we do? What do you right. think they're going to do? Right. Uh, I always wondered about that. I remember there was a time a few years back when the coach's timeout, the coach could come literally right on the ice and take a broom and actually start pointing. Yeah. This is where we should go, and they could walk around the rings. And it wasn't a very smart idea, I think. The uh, the juniors now have very active coaching. Yep. Uh, sitting out there and talking through it the whole game. Right. Uh, and the Scotties and the Briar, they're sitting there behind the scoreboards all the time. So yep. you're just chatting through the whole game. Yeah. So it looks like they're going to make a freeze tap here, or just a, just tap it up to the button. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, with the with the drag, you'll get that. I agree. Yeah, this is a this is a good call. Uh, use that backing to your advantage. A little <laughs> high side might drag it right onto yeah. the face. Right? Yeah, exactly. I think the important part about this shot is you do not want to be too heavy if you. If you're a little too heavy, you you move the back rocks around too much. You don't want to. Right now, it's helping Team Daigle. So here we go. Keep it high side. Stay corner frozen. And a two tap. This one's coming in nicely. Oh, there. Now it's curling. They might have overcut it. 
Well, looks like they're hitting where they want. And they're now shot. Very nice shot. Good shot. And the angles don't really favor Team Mitchell here, so it looks like they're going to hit. What's their drag effect here? Any chance of getting... There's a possibility. Even if they even if they hit it and miss the shot rock, she could still get the blue one yeah. at the back and lose the back yellow. And then where does that other blue rock go over to that catcher yeah, you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's... That would be kind of cool. This rock's got to curl a bit. Oh. It. Not oh, bad. catcher. Oh. Got to save that other one over there. Oh, it rolled. Ooh, oh, did that, that ever spin, spin back? That. That's not a bad shot. That's, yeah. That does the trick. That's the best they could have done there, I believe. Yeah. Can't tell if Bluer. Yellow is shot from this camera angle. Get a look in a second. I believe blue is shot. So this is the first rock for Jessica Dago. I think the freeze is good. Yep. Could tap that back yellow one out so that you can get the blue out later. Yeah. But, uh, it, you you really want to make sure here that you're right on the nose of the blue. If you're anywhere on the outside side, there's a triple for yeah. sure. So this is all about line. You could be heavy and tap this back. This is all line. Line looks pretty good. Nice shot. That's a very nice shot. Definitely the right side to play that on. Now, do we make a straight freeze or do we just make a small hack weight hit to get rid of the backing? Looks like she's going to play a little bit of weight at it. Hmm. Could it's actually you. You could um, you could actually hit the left one first from this vantage point where, where her broom is, make two yellows disappear, and maybe lie on top of the of the middle rock. Yeah. And if that's the case, here she could be set up for three. Two you could. Do the center line side, you'd leave them shot rock, but where do they put the second one that doesn't right. leave it all? Right. right. So here comes her Mackenzie Mitchell's first rock. The eighth end. That looked like a good throw. Nice shot. Yeah, pretty good really result. Good shot. Pretty Holds good result smokes. there. Yep. So I don't think that blue is going anywhere right now. I think she's just calling the freeze to it right now. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. It's just a quick update as uh, Jessica's going down to the other end on sheet number one. Uh, team Hilliard stole two in the seventh end. They're now up 9-4 and in control against Team McDermott. In on sheet number two, Colton Steele sto scored one in the seventh and is up 5-3 on Stuart Thompson. And on sheet number four, it looks like Brent McDougall scored one in the seventh end and is trailing 6-2. to two. So comes Jessica Daigle with her second shot. Sweepers are calling T-line. Don't think it's quite to the T. 
They're really taking it though. Alright, so it looks like a draw to the side of the button now for second point. I don't think there's any shot for multiple there right now. Good end. The yeah, I think I think Team Mitchell will be happy with the way that end came out. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't looking too good for a little bit. This is the you know, eighth end, key game. Draw to the side of the button. That skips get all the notoriety. That's right. For this shot, for this type of shot. Some of them even take forty percent of the purse. <laughs> <in> the game, <laughs> so. Are you one of those? No, no. <laughs> Kenzie Mitchell coming up with their final shot, looking to draw the side of the button. Super's on and off right now. They seem to like it. This one's coming over pretty hard too and curling, so this is very close. I think she's got it. Very nice shot. That's a big two for Team Mitchell to take the lead after eight ends. And now up six to five. Well, my tummy's churning in a little bit, yeah. so I can't <laughs> imagine what theirs is. That's great. I also might be hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I only had a small bowl of Cheerios this morning. Maybe that's it. Ready to go with the eighth end, or ninth end, excuse me. Again, big games out here today. They are all C qualifiers. The winners advance on to the three, four playoffs in their respective uh, divisions. The losers are out. So we will be losing four teams today. But we'll, we'll probably be gaining four teams up in the patch later tonight. First rock from Kate Fitzgerald. Looks like it's coming back four. Oh, do you do two. Looks like they're going to try to... Take two in the tenth. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try to keep this end open. Unless we have a rollout and we might see a corner guard go up. Change gears. Taking a peek over on sheet two. Stuart Thompson with a big shot here. That unlucky. In our game, keeping the ninth end open. Good throw by Fitzgerald. So this time maybe I'll take a quick second to recognize some of the sponsors for the individual teams, so uh, Team Mitchell would like to thank their sponsors, which are Neutralon, Wendy's, Black & McDonald, New Scotland Brewing Company, Hardline, and they also want to put a quick shout out to their coach, Mike Callahan, and Team Daigle would like to put a big shout out to their sponsors, which are Quantum Sports Therapy and Group Fit, and the Burning Flame Candle Company, and a big Huge thanks to their coach, coaches, Kevin Ouellette and Andrew Ling. What do you think they get from Wendy's? 
Um, hmm. What's their uh, frosty? You I don't know. I don't know. Their chilies are chili chili is good. good. All right. Yeah. yeah. Burgers are good. Yeah. I was there last night actually. <laughs> Had a burger. It was all right. All right. So we're keeping it open. Question is, are we drawing into the rings or are we putting a corner up? We will soon find out. Looks like a draw into the rings right now. So they're happy to keep everything open to try to keep that hammer into the 10th end. This is the second Sarah Chater, looking to make an open hit. And a hit made, looking to exchange. Got to keep your focus here, especially if, well, on both sides. So, so you don't want to give away any free points. You don't want to stick around just off the rings. That gives uh, the freeze possibility. Right. Like you can kind of get into rush mode or some rhythm where everything's going faster in the ninth than these open ends and uh, accidents happen. Exactly. So want to take the take the adrenaline down a little bit. Yeah. Hit made. And Marley Powers look, looking to replace that rock on the other side, I believe. Shot made. Looks like we'll just do another exchange. The uh, throwing percentages are going through the roof. That's right. This definitely brings them up that yep. much more. We get the year end bonus. One thing I have noticed this game is that um, although we've had a few jams and some uh, overthrows and the hits, I, I found the draws have all been pretty spot on for the most part. Yeah. yeah, the ice is so good. It's first game, first shot, you take a number, and then I'm sure the last game of the tournament will be the exact same thing. That's right. Kind of you say numbers to reinforce it, but it's not because you're looking for new info. It's right. just part of the routine. Well, that rock moved quite a bit, but uh, still does the trick. Yeah, you could be daring and try to freeze this, but uh, uh, I don't think... <laughs> no, it's no, not. But I like that thought. It's one of my favorite thoughts. Part of me is to try to suck the other team into trying to think they're going to get two and then uh, yeah. only get one and then you get the hammer back last end. So. Right, yeah. Depends on your comfort with yep. uh, being down one. Like giving up a deuce isn't the worst thing. No, nope, absolutely not. So this 
this would be uh, like if we want to get if we want to do some overthinking. Uh, if Dag was thinking, I don't want to get stuck seeing a freeze, then she might peel. Yep. And then peel on her last. Right. One. I, yeah. There's no. I, I think this shot. There's no. Um, you don't have to stay around. That's. No. Now I do see, I believe I see a final over on sheet four. I, I didn't actually see the f final rocks, but there's nobody over there anymore. So uh, based on the score I see over there, it looks like uh, Paul Fleming's team will be advancing into the 3-4 game. And Brent McDougall will be at the patch tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they will be at the patch. I wouldn't want to be playing Team Fleming in the playoffs. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Fleming is a is a streaky little yeah. player. Yeah. Well, you know all those days that you played with him. Yeah, it's uh, you know, he knows how to get it done. Exactly. This would be interesting if this goes out. Oh, uh, if that went out, that could have been a chance to freeze. The, you know, could you? Ooh. Whoops. Could you come down and get the best of both worlds? Just tap it a foot. Tap it a foot, stay yeah. Stay in front of it. Yeah. I think she's happy just to, to make this go away right now. Yep. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Part of me says just to hit this and give up the hammer and play for the steal on 10. If I was the uh, the Mitchell team, just play all out. Especially with the five five rock and the, the no tick rule. Quite easy to steal and you can switch gears pretty quick if you, you had to. And you would? Um, <laughs> I would definitely be looking hard at that uh, freeze little tap yep. and then I would definitely get an earful from a couple of my teammates. <laughs> Craig wouldn't like that. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how it would turn out. I usually capitulate because he's usually right. Right. Uh, but sometimes I just like the idea of a nifty shot yep. and it uh, doesn't always mean it's the right Yeah. Like I said, if you did try something like that, even if you didn't make that properly and gave up the two, you still have hammer in the last end. Low risk and yeah. uh, some pretty good upside. Yep. So this looks like the throw through to maintain the hammer going into the 10th end. I want to keep this as clean as possible. And successful. So we've got a game going into the 10th end. Team Dagel will keep the hammer down by one. And a quick update over on sheet number one. I know uh, there was a McDermott score, but it hasn't gone up as of yet, and they have not conceded, so it must have been for multiple points. Stay tuned for that. And on uh, sheet number two, Stuart Thompson, I know, scored one in the eighth end and are trailing five to four. And Team Steele has the hammer going into the ninth end. Just wanted to take another minute to thank some of our event sponsors, our primary sponsors for the 2024 Provincial Playdowns. First one would be Ocean Contractors Limited which is the title sponsor for the Tankard Provincial. Ocean Contractors Limited is located in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and has been a valued sponsor of curling events and teams from the province. Make sure you visit them at oceancontractors.ca. And a big shout out and thank you to Kruger Products. As you know, Scotty's is the sponsor of the Women's Provincial Playdown. Scotty's has been a sponsor of women's amateur curling for more than 40 years at the provincial and national level. And we thank you and ask you to support them and off we go. Kate Fitzgerald throwing the first rock. Ideally would like to throw one tight on the center line. And it looks like they're gonna come in. Put a top four. And 
here comes the corner guard. Yeah, Jessica is just off the ice out here, but coming back on is Katie Vandenborg. And she puts that corner guard up. Pretty far over there, but it still will do the trick. Either of these teams are really struggling for time. They still have lots of time remaining. Still have timeouts remaining. So expect to see some rocks this end. So the score did go up and, uh, on sheet number one. Chris McDermott scored one in the eighth end and are trailing nine to five. However, they do not have hammer in going into the ninth end. Very nice shot by Kate Fitzgerald, putting it right on top. Jessica Daigle looked like she makes wants to make the hit and roll right now. You could put another guard up. But she does want to keep it somewhat open and somewhat simple. Yeah, I can guarantee the tie yep. with keeping it open. Yep. Somewhat guarantee it. Close to the roll here. Still does the trick. Opens up the forefoot. <coughs> yeah, Team Mitchell might have wanted a guard in play that couldn't be hit for a few shots just to keep that center line clogged up. Now I think they'll be chasing. Most of the end. No matter what happens here, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Dad goes behind the corner. Yeah. This one's over curling. It sure is. I don't know if she's got any of it. Oh, she's just a bit. Now. Credit to Mitchell for not saying hard for a piece. <laughs> worst phrase. Absolutely. Now the two is definitely in play. Sure, we're extra clean on this one. Big shot. All right. The sweepers on this pretty early. The line is fine. I think the sweepers are going for weight. Even a little biter will do the trick here. I think they got it there. Great. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Get some fist bumps going. They must think it's on. I know our overtop camera angle doesn't give a great view of it, but, uh, but Mackenzie is going to make a play at this, so it must be on. Not even looking at the. Maybe it's not on. I don't know. Uh, it sure looks on to me. Just an interesting call. I, I, hmm. She's got the peel. Now it'll be interesting to see what Jessica does. If it's a hit, that means that rock must be on. So if that rock is on, this end is set up very nicely right now for Jessica Daigle. Everything's nice and open. Rocks are spread out. 
more of these uh, high intensity open hits, like they're not uh, gimmies. Right. This looks pretty good. Yep. Now the call will be to try to group the rocks together as much as possible to try and get set up a double a little bit later in the end. It's a big shot. If it you is. Can get yep. over center line or even further across. Right. Then, uh, right. Kate Callahan can do here. They're on and off it. Looks like it has to curl a little bit. Just a lot of weight thrown on that. Now they can set up the the two. Try to line them up as best as possible. And it'll be interesting to see what Team Mitchells does if they, assuming they make this shot, mm. is it time to uh, maybe throw up a center guard or freeze to something? one shot at trying to group them together, see if you can sneak a double. Yeah. After that, you got to go for it. So they're fighting to get this one in. It's going to be a race running out of rings. I don't think they're going to I don't think so. Wow. Oh my goodness Big break. Mackenzie couldn't get over there quick enough to put this broom down. I have to stop prognosticating. Once <laughs> I go ahead a couple rocks, I know. it never pans out. It's like real curly. That's the life of a skip, Glenn. Yeah. That's your job. Um, Team Mitchell wants to be a little careful here. They may want to make sure that they stay around on this shot. If not, then, uh, then a split could be made or come around. So it's important to stay here. This one's got some curling to do. It's going to roll out. Now, the question is, we're, is this going to be a straight draw around? Marley just threw this shot. Marley Powers throwing her last rock of the end. <laughs> this looks pretty good. Don't want to be too deep. Or Ow. Two calls. Play the run back. Timeouts being called. Coach is heading out to the ice. I think they think they've already made up their mind. No, they're not uh, taking their coach's advantage. They're just uh, stopping the clock. A little fake out. Yep. So what happens? Is the other coach the time it was called? So yeah. The other coach still go out. And I think hang I, th out? I think the team that that made the call for the timeout dictates the the play so if the coach doesn't go out I don't think the other coach is allowed to go out either okay. because they're going to like their timeout's still going so and they're going to throw so looks like a final on sheet number one while we're discussing looks like team Hilliard ran team McDermott out of rocks and they'll advance into the 3-4 game this afternoon at 2 o'clock 
tell you something Team Hilliard does. They win games. They're, they're sneaky good. Yeah. Yeah, they're always there. They were uh, declared an up-and-coming team by Brad McCann in the opening ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> caught, caught a couple of them off guard. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got a little bit of weight to it. It's got to come down. That does the trick, though. Nice shot. Very nice shot. I think the straight to freeze is the, I think is so. the call. I thought she was looking at the guard. For a yeah, second. I don't think you want to tap and get too fancy here. I think you just want to do a straight corner freeze yeah. and hope the other team uh, rolls off on their last shot. Yeah. You wanna, yeah, uh, they freeze, and if uh, Mitchell makes a good freeze, you could decide to put the game in the line with a run back at yep. that close uh, exactly. guard. Exactly, yep. Now that I look two shots ahead, none of that will be in play. <laughs> Something different will show up. I'm going to guess this is going to be close. Uh, Jessica's made a fair number of draws this game and pretty much has a good feel for draw weight right now. All right, Jessica Daigle settling down in the hack. Here's the delivery. They're calling the sweeping for line right away. Line doesn't look too bad from where I'm standing. She wants to keep the angle though. Has to be shot after this and she is, that's a great shot. Second time out being called. Coach Mike sits back in his chair. He doesn't fall for things twice. Nope, that's right. Yep. I think early in the game, Craig, we were wondering, uh, when's our excitement? But we've got the most exciting game That's going right. on here. It looks like we're going to be the last one on the ice, the way those things are going. In the other game in sh on sheet number two, uh, Colton Steele is up seven to four with Hammer in the last end against Team Thompson. And it looks like they're lying, Team Steele's lying three rocks, three shots. Thompson does have the hammer on that one, though. Big shot here. Have to make sure you have shot rock after this. Line looks good. I don't know if they're going to get there, and they're not. Wow. Can try. Looks like it's going to be an open draw. Full eight foot for the win. So close. It's a big shot here. This is for the win to qualify <coughs> for the playoffs at two, starting at 2 o'clock today. She'll take her time on this. Sweeper's first reaction out of the hand. Two. Sweepers are on and off, so they seem to like. I think she's trying to slow it down. I don't think it's curling yet. Looks like it's hanging, and well, the 
this is this is heavy. Yep. Kate's going to go hard on this, and it's through. So it's going to be an extra end. So big turn of events there. We're going to an 11th. Score tied at 6-6. Six, six. You've had a lot of turn of events in this game. That's right. Mm -hmm. oh. Teams get a little timeout before their, the 11th end starts, and I think we'll take a little timeout too. We'll be back in a couple minutes. And we're back for the 11th end. And just watching the uh, game on sheet two, it looks like Colton Steele has run Team Stuart Thompson out of rocks and will advance to the 3-4 game this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Looks like they'll be playing Paul Fleming. So our page is set up on the men's side. Good the bounce back by Colton. Uh, they were 0 and 2. I believe. Yeah, yeah, I believe you're right. Yeah. yeah. End of the playoffs. Peak at the right time. Yeah. And there's only one question to be answered now, and that's who will have the final spot for the females? Will it be Team Mitchell or Team Daigle? First rock by Team Daigle is in a perfect spot on the center line. Well, given the way this game has gone, it is a coin toss. It is. Yeah. It's a bit of a mistake on the first rock to be back. Looks like they'll play a double guard here, which is. First rock, a uh, little yellow. It's I always like to get a deep rock and a high rock. Right. right. Two tight rocks. This one looks like it's going to come in. Yeah, which is okay. That center line, and yep. that's a fine yep, shot. That's not bad. Kenzie Mitchell's going to stay on the offense, try to put that top four ideally around. Fitzgerald. Sweeping this hard for line, I believe. By the guard. It's 
not bad. Shot. Yeah, pretty good. Available right now, so. Hmm. It'd be helpful to Team Dag. Yeah, I don't know if you want to fool around with that. Yeah. Rocks back, possibly. Yeah. Just not a bad call. Bad just to draw around those two? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. Surprising. Happens here. She's not throwing a lot of weight. This one has some has some movement to make. Not bad. Not bad. No. One rock behind the button is. It's good to have when yep, you're trying to see Absolutely. Series. So now you'll see Team Mitchell try to keep this as open as possible. <laughs> right now it looks like just a straight peel, which is ideal. Yes. <laughs> second Sarah Chater. It's cleaning it down. Looks like she's made her peel. Now they'll probably put a few guards up here now. Hope for a miss somewhere. There's no rush right now to be shot, Rock. I wonder which shot they'll make the move on. Will it be third slash shot? That's, that's my uh, initial thought. Yeah. Save it for, for Marley's last shot. Looking to get this one over. I think they just got it over. Oh, I don't. Oh, yes, they did. <clears throat> so again, Team Mitchell will just want to make this dis disappear. There's that uh, one over in the wide 12 foot that has the last rock option in off. Right. Uh, and I think that's why uh, Mitchell's peeling this way instead of going the other way. Yeah. Keep that rock, if need be, on the last shot. All right, so we're looking for another guard, I believe. And then we'll see if your premonition happens on the next shot. I'm due to get one of yeah. them. <laughs> for sure. I'm running at ends. is third Marley Powers with her first rock. Ideally, they don't want to be too tight. Yeah, that's a nice shot it will make. Make Team Mitchell continue to peel. One time where precision on guards doesn't matter. Just That's get right. a guard up yep. there. Exactly. Waste some shots. And working. Down to working. Slash. Ooh, that's working this one. I'm just going to get a little roll off. It does the trick. Now, oh, look at that, Glenn. You called it. it no, okay. She's cut. Yeah, she, she tapped the button. Yeah. That was your call, Greg. No, it was. It was yours initially, and then I kind of went, oh, yeah, maybe. Okay. I'll give you credit for that. As a skip, I'll take credit. <laughs> Steel Valor. It's a big shot here for Marley Powers. 
She could afford to bump this a little bit. I like the line. Yep. Oh, we got some carving, which means it might be a hair heavy. She looks quite heavy. Not, not bad. bad. Not bad. Now the the goal here is not to get too cutesy and Gotta keep worry too this, much. Yeah. Yeah. Keep this blue in front of the T line yep. if you can. Yep. Even a nose hit's not horrible here. Or Kate Callahan's last shot. Sweepers are close. This looks very close, actually. A little flop. Very nice shot. Great shot. Now, the button has been taken away. Uh, tap, bump to the back forefoot. I don't think that's a good play. Yep. I think right now that's the best option, just to to have something on your last shot to freeze to. And the way you're going to do that is to get that blue one on the button back a foot or two. Timeout's being called. Coach Kevin and Coach Mike on their way out to talk to the teams. You could even, instead of even touching the yellow, just play the straight tap on the shot and just roll into the open as long, and you'll have something on your last shot to freeze to. Yeah. Make a nice wall. I wish we had a telestrator, but I know. tap it to the angle over. Right where the broom is. The broom is. Yep. Yeah. Right. That's definitely the easier shot. Right. Mm, better guarantee that you'll have uh, something on your last. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the tap just because if you don't make it right, then it's going to be wide open and, and you don't want that. Yeah. Well, she initially called to freeze to the back one as well, or the, the second shot rock, but I don't know if that does anything either. Need to make a pocket. That blue somewhere where there's a pocket. Yeah, right so there. I like that. Yeah, that's that's and again, this is all a line shot. She could be a little heavy on this. She's just trying to set up her next shot. She definitely won't get shot after this. Back to her uh, one over in the wide 12 foot. You if bet. she does this, it sets up a catcher's mitt yeah. for coming in on yeah, that too. Yeah, absolutely does. <coughs> it's definitely the most important shot of the game right now. Yeah. Jessica Daigle's first rock in the 11th end. Sweeping this for line. Very close to that card, that uh, top eight. And she's by. That's a good shot. That's good. It's the best she could do. <coughs> timeout is being called right now for um, Team Mitchell. It's just like an NBA game. Timeouts in the last few seconds. That's right. Lots of options here. Hmm. She could try to put a second one in there. She could hit that yellow one. She could guard the yellow one. She could make the double on the, the yellows. That might be a little dangerous, but. If you can somehow nose that yellow one in the top four foot then even if Dag makes a good one you can slash that in. That's right you'll still have a rock in your last one. Yeah the key is not to 
hut to do their job for them right. and angle it in. We've seen a couple of those so far. But they saw Kate Callahan's shot down that line and she made a beauty. So. Yeah, I do like making a play at that yellow one. Mm. Even if you uh, hit it just a little off the nose and lose the shot rock, as long as that yellow's gone, there still should be a shot in her last. Yep. Ideally, I think you hit the nose of that. Yep. And then all she has is, is a very, very hard in-turn draw to the button. And you can play a bunch of different weights. You can play hack weight, yep. you can play normal yep. weight, and just play tight ice, tight to the guard. Because if you tick the guard... That's not horrible. That's not horrible. No. I agree. So it looks like the call they're making is a, a guard. What they've chosen. Yeah. Well, it's a, one of the viable options. Yep. Not a bad option. And then the uh, the options will be there, whether she plays a freeze with a, an intern, which I don't know if she can get enough of the button. She can tap the top eight rock back. She can play that in off, as you said earlier. The tap, that tap is there, but really tough to get shot rock with the intern. This one, too, if it's too tight, it might just make a double tap. Fairly straightforward. Right. right. Ooh, this is, this is a fun part of the game. <laughs> All right, Mackenzie Mitchell coming with her first rock of the 11th end. Rock is way out there. Looks a little on the light side, so both sweepers are on this. Here, it has picked up the curl. A great shot. Yeah, those are tough guards. That's yeah. a nice shot. Yep. Yeah. Now there's the is there an intern through the hole over curl tap yeah. across the face? I see that. It's a lot of that's a lot of words. For it a is, shot. but it might be the easiest shot, believe yeah. it or not. It is definitely there the way this curls. Yeah. It's literally just a back four weight shot. I think she's looking at that right now. I think that's what she's playing. That rock that uh, Mackenzie Mitchell just threw just had to come another two inches. Ah, oh, the weight with that ice. Looks like they're throwing like, I guess they're throwing a hack weight, but. Any more than hack is too much. Yeah. But any less, she might if she, if she's just playing back four, it might even overcurl and not make the shot. So they seem pretty confident about this. It's a big shot here for Jessica Daigle. This is a new uh, contender for a biggest shot of the game. That's right. Okay, I like the release. They're going on and on. She's by. She made it. Just had to curl that much more. Just had a little too much weight. Yeah, excellent game. So Team Mitchell won't have to throw their last rock. They will score in that last end. And uh, Team Mitchell advances on to the 3-4 playoff game this afternoon at 2 o'clock against Team Tanya Hilliard. And tonight's, actually, let me just finish with the uh, three, four games this afternoon with uh, Hilliard and Mitchell. And the other game will be Team Colton Steele against Team Paul Fleming. And then tonight will be the one, two playoff games between Team Black and Team Smith, as well as Team Manuel and Team Purcell. We hope to see you a little bit later. Hope to see you down at the club, 948 South Bland Street. Glenn, it's been fun. Yeah, so it's a great game to watch yeah. uh, with you, Greg. Yeah. And, uh, exciting okay. times to come in the playoffs. That's right. So thank you very much for watching. Thank, again, our sponsors, Ocean Contractors and Kruger Products for their uh, 
wonderful contributions. And we will see you this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Cheers. <laughs>